After building our new canopy setup and traveling Australia for the last four months, we have a list of things that broke and things that need to be tweaked. I feel a little bit stressed. Big task. Let's give it a go. We didn't break anything, so that's good. <laughs> you gotta check this out. There is so much rust in here. Because I have planned out the next eight months worth of adventures that we need to get ready for. I've left some room at the bottom because I'm sure we've forgotten some things. Let's get to work. And guys, we are at our home base and we have an apparent of 1.5 and it is cold. <sighs> Jeez, that's a big list. So guys, we've broken the list into three categories. Everything that broke, general things that need to be tweaked, and there are two major jobs that I need to investigate before they become catastrophic. Let's rip the band-aid off. Let's get one of the big jobs underway. Big job number one is I have rust somewhere in my fuel system because I have found it in my pre-filter. At the moment, I've been swapping out my filters more regularly so it doesn't get in my fuel pump and become catastrophic and I'm up for a new pump. So I'm just giving this a good clean around the fuel neck so we don't get any dirt fall back into the tank when we take the neck off. So the plan is I'm going to rip both fuel necks off, put a siphon in and see if I can eliminate whether it's coming from the tanks. It's clean. The fuel that I siphoned out came out clean, but there's absolutely no way of knowing whether the siphon was on the bottom of the tank and whether I was sucking it off the bottom. So I think I'm going to have to come up with a plan B to actually eliminate the tank. This is the fuel from the sub tank fuel from the main tank. I think I just have to rip the band-aid off and I'm just gonna pull the sub tank out. It's the only way to find out. I feel a little bit stressed. Big task. Let's give it a go. One thing that we broke while we were away was our oil jar. I just got the oil out to make us popcorn and there's no bottom left in it. Now I've changed that over to a plastic jar, but I still have two items that we take that are glass. So what I'm gonna do to protect these guys so hopefully we never break them, I'm going to be making little stubby holders for them. Stage one, complete cover off. Next, drop the tank. Fits like a glove. I'd love to put some on the bottom as well, but it only just fits in height in the drawer. So hopefully this will do the job. You can see there guys, that's the transfer pump and she's completely rusted. We got him. I drained some fuel out of it when I pulled it apart. So let's go in to the bench and have a look and see if there's any rust in the bucket. I am about to set off on my very first solo adventure. So not only do I need to clean, organize and pack the patrol, but I also need to go through a lot of the items that we have on our to be tweaked list and adjust things so that they're manageable for me to do on my own when Shannon's not with me. And first up on my to-do list is the Max Tracks. Normally I can't even budge them. Let's make sure that I can turn all four of them. We have been hitting it with WD-40. That's what I'm going to do again today. Make sure they're nicely lubed. So in a pinch, I can get these off with or without Shannon. This is a big leap of faith. Why are my legs so short? Do we find our rust source? Well, it looks to be because... rust in there, I think. I mean, it could be a little bit of dirt, but it definitely looks like the rust that's in the pre-filter. But tiny if that's particles. all it is, it's gone from a massive job and a big expense to, mm. I don't know how big of a job and I don't know how it's expensive, but less expensive and less of a job? Well, potentially we've just got to replace this and just run some cleaner through the fuel system just to make sure the tanks are all clean and there's no particles left. Our logic is if there is rust in either of the tanks, it's going to be the sub tank yep. because 
it spends the majority of its life like i always leave fuel in it but we don't use the sub tank a lot so no. i think in condensation can build up in the tank creating moisture moisture is rust so we're guessing yeah it's all coming up with theories at the moment but potentially rust in here if it's rust it should be metal which means a magnet should move it and if i put a magnet on there i'm dragging those particles up the side of the tub so that means it is metal, it is rust, it has come from somewhere around where we are. We're making progress. So in a pinch, I need to be able to get the tires off and change a tire. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna put Shannon out of a job. Very proud right now. I think I'm just gonna have to drill the head off it. So just to be clear guys, I'm not planning on putting this back in. I purely just want to see if it's rusted inside. Regardless, I'll buy a new one. I am super pumped with how easy I just got this tire off. This guy is actually going to stay off and we're putting the rear bar on and drop some weight while we're more local and don't need two spares. I'm just going to have to watch my form to make sure that I don't hurt my back at all, but otherwise, pretty good. I'm stoked. All right, guys, I finally got this pump apart. Now, there was a tiny bit of rust inside the pump, but not a lot. So I don't think this was the underlining issue, but I'm glad I found it because it was nearly rusted through on all of the seals and everything. So it wouldn't have been too long before this thing had had it anyway. So we'll get a new one in and I'll keep looking. Another thing that I can't do to save my life. This pin is meant to just pop out. That ain't going nowhere. That pin is meant to pop out so that I can swing out the ensuite awning. Oh. I had no chance in hell. No wonder why I couldn't do it. I didn't know about these little hammer trees. I'm going to get Shannon to drill that hole out and make it a bit looser for me. So that I can do that on my own too. Let's test it one handed. Oh yeah! One thing that we did break on this awning was the safety chain for the pin. So I'm going to put a new one on, put it in an easier location to use, and uh, hopefully we won't break it again. Making headway. I've only got a couple of bolts left, and this tank will be out. All right, guys, so I've got this all unbolted now. I'm going to pull the filler neck off, and then we can drop this thing down, pull it out, and investigate. on back to front <laughs> if truth be told they had it right and i said no it goes the other way so my bad just quickly swap it around and uh, we'll be underway sender never pulled one of these out before so not really stuck on not really sure how they come out now that looks in good condition Have a bit of a look in here and see what we can see it looks like the both side walls there's hardly any rust but the bottom the bottom looks like there's a fair bit of rust on it eh? that's a problem Not yet, yet it's coming. Here it goes. We need to move on to plan B. So we've drained almost 20 litres out of that sub tank now. And looking down in here, I can see small particles of rust in there. So maybe we've found the cause of the problem. You gotta check this out. There is so much rust in here. Now we've drained the tank out. I'm gonna get a fresh rag and give it a wipe and see what comes out. Job to roll your sleeve up for. I don't think the bottom of your diesel tank should look like that. You guys might ask where to go from here. Not really sure, but we have a bit of a plan. 
So I'm thinking I want to try and make sure that I can get the car going without the sub tank. So I'm going to crank it over, see how it goes. I think it should work from what I understand. Now I'm expecting the car to die once the fuel, once the airlock comes through. I might be completely wrong. I don't really know. I'm not qualified in this at all. Just let it run for a bit and see what happens. Then if I can get the car going, I think I'm going to drop the main tank out of the rear today and see if there's rust in it also and then from there well, we can investigate either a tank restoration or we install new tanks so depending on how much it all costs and what they can do in terms of restoration or what we can do in terms of restoration if i drop the tank out today and i find some rust in it the plan would be just to put it back in so we can get the car going and we can still be doing adventures because i know a new tank ordering is about six weeks plus so guys something else that broke was my drop down table i had this stainless steel wire and unfortunately i forgot to disconnect it when i got the tires rotated in uh, catherine and when they took the tire off dropped it on it and it snapped it so what i'm thinking is i'm going to upgrade this to some actual chain so hopefully it doesn't happen again i've added to the list a rubber mat for the gas bottle to sit on we originally had a gas bottle rubber ring that went onto the bottom of the gas bottle, but that lasted about a month and a half before it broke off. And I can see wear marks on where the gas bottle sits on the tray. So just to protect it, cut a bit of rubber up, pop it down, and then hopefully that's another problem solved. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love it. I'm becoming more confident. Your shirt might be ruined. Where? It is. What's on it? In black. black what? <laughs> I don't know. Off the car, I'm guessing, and then you've laid on it. Oh no. Never mind. Ah uh, well, work shirt. It's got a couple of holes in it. This one. We didn't break anything, so that's good. <laughs> My next job now is to work out where the chemical toilet's gonna go and where the swag's gonna go, how they're gonna get strapped down now that we've got the rear back bar and one tire gone. That was really hard, like flat out honest. I'm agitated from doing that from getting the swag on the back of the ute because it was hard. But it poses another question. Can I even roll that swag up on my own? So I'm gonna need to set it up and test it. And then the toilet fits really nicely down here, but I'm gonna need to get Shannon to put another anchor point in, maybe so that it goes in between the two tires so that I can strap her in. That's gonna have to go onto the Bunnings list because we do not have any more anchor points. So that's another day's project. You just never know what I'll have in my shed laying around. Another anchor point. Yeah, we're about to pull out the sender on the large fuel tank. Let's hope there's no rust in here. I think it looks in pretty good condition. Oh, she's pristine, mate. That's like brand new. <laughs> that is a solid win. Now we just gotta refit it. Time to clean and reorganize this side. Get rid of the old fridge. I have to say that I was curious to check out our rubber matting from Bunnings. $4.50 a roll. I think all up we use three rolls. Very cheap and cost effective. But I'm super curious to see how it's faring. And honestly, I don't think it is. Might have to add that to the list too. But first, let's get everything out of the canopy and assess it properly. Oh, what a big job. Let's just do it.
I can confirm that the matting did not last at all. I think it's too lightweight, too flimsy, moves around way too much. There's holes all worn through it. I think it's gone in the bin and we may or may not be buying some thicker stuff. I've got to talk Shannon. Well, one of the jobs I would like to do is space the inverter off the actual metal canopy. When the sun hits the canopy, it gets really, really hot to touch. And I'm worried that it's just making the inverter way too hot because that fan just keeps running all the time. So I'm thinking a bit of 25mm tube behind it, space it off, give it some more airflow, and hopefully it won't get as hot. with the old and in with the new. Dunny's on guys, the Dunny's on. Welcome to our tiny guys. One last thing so I can get this off the list is to trim the ends and melt them so they don't fray anymore. I'm gonna use my little gas burner. Some nice melted ends there, that should do it. So the plan with this rear bar guys is to have these plates on unless we're doing a long trip and then we're gonna take the rear bar on and off. So we're gonna have it on when we're picking up materials and doing kayaking trips, but otherwise we'll take it off, but it's gonna be super easy. Just undo these little, whatever they're called, and then pull it on in and on. Perfect. I think that made much sense. I think you know what I'm talking about. When we were in Sydney, someone tried to break into the canopy of the ute. I know, shocking, isn't it? Bloody mongrels. But they snapped off the handle on one of my locks. They also had a go at each door. Can you see that? Three attempts they had on each door. We are so lucky that they didn't get in to the canopy or the cab, otherwise we wouldn't be here today making this video. I've already fitted the new lock, but I wanna take the old cylinder from the broken lock, put it in the new lock so both sides of the canopy are keyed alike. Success. Same key on both sides now. Look how putrid this water is. Can you even believe it? Four months worth of God knows what. Well guys, it is time to start fitting the main fuel tank back into the patrol. Feeling a little bit overwhelmed. There's a lot to line up and it's quite heavy. So gravity is against us this time. With our fridge dead and gone after serving us well yep. for so many years. And our new freezer that we just bought, thermostat's completely gone. We need to try and get that under warranty repaired. Yep, that leaves us with needing a fridge and not wanting to spend any money, so... We're going to put back in the old 75 litre Dometic that yep. we just had repaired under warranty because of the thermostat issue <laughs> also. So it's quite awkward to get into, so you'd have to have only one hand to get your stuff out because you've got to hold the door up or we got to make something to hold the door up. Completely changes the footprint of the car and how we had everything stored. The downside to having the fridge going this way as well is our anchor point is here and here, whereas we need the anchor point here and here. Yeah. Which then poses the question, how on earth do we strap it in and secure it? This is definitely far from ideal and definitely temporary, but for now, this can keep us adventuring. Yep. 
we have decided to put rubber matting down some nice, good, proper stuff. We're thinking to go to Clark Rubber to do that, but we do not have a Clark Rubber anywhere near us. So it's not going on the list and it won't get done now, but it's going on a future list when we're near a Clark Rubber, we'll pick some up. That went up way easier than I was anticipating. We just need to connect all the tubes up and then I've got to get the airlock out, bleed the lines, and then, fingers crossed, the car will start. That primer bulb was pretty hard already, so I don't know if I need to get air out or not. So I'm just gonna start the car and just see what happens. Worst case, we'll take the fuel line off and we'll prime the air out. Come on, baby. Yeah, boy! Hey, hey, success. We'll just let it run for a while, make sure we get all the airlocks out. When we're changing over our canopy setup, at first I thought that dropping from two drawers to one drawer with clear top bags was gonna be a huge compromise. It turns out I absolutely love them. These are the Ridge 4x4 clear top bags absolutely love them love them love them you can really just organize the crap out of your pantry and i just love it <laughs> did i say love enough now i've got to get these back away and all of this stuff down here needs to go into its new home ultimately in the canopy and if i'm not taking it on this next trip it's going to go into the storage cupboards in the shed packing is all done excluding me putting in my personal stuff bag toiletries my chair, laptop, and some food. And the shed is looking so much better. All right, guys, we're on to big job number two, which is the instrument cluster. Now, we've mentioned it in other episodes, I've uh, my instrument cluster cuts in and out, so then I'll have no speedo, no revs, no fuel gauge, no temperature, basically nothing. Now, for you patrol guys out there, I've done all the earth strapping, I've tried everything, and nothing seems to have fixed it, so I'm gonna start at the source and pull the cluster out and see if there's anything wrong with it. Making headway, but it's not easy. I'm trying to avoid taking the steering wheel off. I don't know how big of a job that is. I got it. Easier than I thought. Just had to remove the indicator and I didn't have to take the steering wheel out. But I have absolutely no idea what I'm looking at now. Just hoping to see something that stands out to me that kind of connects all the gauges together because they all go at once. I have drained the tank. I haven't flushed it. I'm going to do that when I fill it back up, which I will not do from our tanks here because we're only on rainwater and water is very precious at the moment. So I'm going to fill that up at a public spot. I've got at least 20 litres out of the tank. I'm going to water a fruit tree with that. Morning guys. Morning guys. Today is the last day that we have assigned to work on the car. Yep, we've still got a few things to go. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on the instrument cluster. I jumped the gun just a little bit yesterday, crossing off the fridge. I need to get it back out so that I can clean it. I can't clean it in there because I don't have enough height to be able to get the baskets out. Put it back in, switch it on and actually test and make sure that this old girl, she's not that old, she's about three years old, is actually still working and running well. All right, guys, there's lots going on here with this instrument cluster. I've been testing the continuity between all the earthing. I've tested the continuity in the cab between all the plugs, earthing. I've looked at all the wiring diagrams, trying to see if there's any issues that I can see. There's nothing that I can really see that jumps out at me, but the only thing I've found between all of the things I've tested, the one common denominator between them all is earth. There's the same earth point in every single gauge so what i'm thinking is where it actually plugs into the back of the instrument cluster it only touches on a little tiny ribbon and i'm thinking we normally lose it in heat or in vibrations so i'm thinking that the earth might not be touching the best so the plan is to run a hard earth wire from the cab straight up to the back of the instrument cluster onto the circuit ribbon and then in vibrations and heat if that's what the issue is hopefully we won't lose it so they noticed this wear mark on our rubber seal when she was uh, cleaning out the canopy and it's from where I had this light switch mounted, which was on the gas strut. I've removed the bracket off the back of it and I'm actually gonna double-sided tape it inside the wall of the canopy in here. And that way it won't ruin the seal.
carrying the swag bag around is definitely very awkward for me, but setting it up, no worries at all. One of our swag poles actually broke five weeks into our trip. We contacted Ridge 4x4 under warranty and they were absolutely brilliant to work with. We ended up buying a replacement swag pole kit from Catherine and they refunded us the cost. Now 110 nights in and our other pole end is also showing fracture signs. So I'm gonna contact them under warranty again and I'm gonna pick myself up a new universal swag end pole kit, but I can't get it near home. So I'm gonna to have to get it on my travels at some point. We have two main swag tips for you guys. Number one, the first thing that we do is we cut down our mattress length so that it suits a queen size fitted sheet. The second thing we do is we take the flat queen sheet and we sew little pocket ends so that it can slide into the mattress and stays nice and secured to the actual mattress itself because you don't have the weight of a big mattress and otherwise it's just constantly getting untucked and it's really irritating. Our flat sheet has seen the end of its life. I need to get a new queen size flat sheet and sew new little pocket ends to it so that we have nice and secured sheets and Shannon can't steal my sheets from me. with that pocket. Ready to see the pocket? That there. The swag mattress will just slide in there and this pocket will keep the sheet all in the right spot. And guys, it was actually a lot harder than we um, anticipated because it's been a very long time since we've used a sewing machine. <laughs> Now for the real test, can I actually roll up this double swag all on my own? I'm not feeling very optimistic. <sighs> That was a mini little workout, but I can do it. Couple of things for next time would be, I have to have a designated roll up the swag, put the swag on the back of the tray shirt, because otherwise I am just going to get absolutely trashed every time I do it. And then the second thing was, it wasn't a nice actual roll. It was more like an oblong shape. So then when I put it on the back of the tray, it was really hard to get the tray sides done up. I should have put it with the oblong, like the longest length going up and down rather than in and out, if that makes sense. Two tips for next time, but I think in an ideal world, yes, I wouldn't be such a tight ass and I would go out and buy a single swag. But for now, I think this is gonna work a treat. I have rotated it so the length is up and down rather than across. And now look, one-handed. So guys, the instrument cluster is back in. I unfortunately have four bolts left over. I have no idea where they go. The only way to know now whether I fixed it is just to test it and we'll see what happens and we'll report back. Must be working. Now guys, the air fitting under the cab that the compressor hose plugs into is an absolute nightmare. It's got grit and dirt in it and I've mounted it, I think in quite an awkward spot. So I'm gonna try and lube it up with some WD-40 and see if that helps. Otherwise we'll have to move its location. Guys, I'm the real test because I've never actually been able to do this before. Straight in. Straight out. Well done, thanks Shan this bash plate that sits up the front of the car which protects all of our steering components it fell off surprisingly on the Stewart Highway but I think all the corrugations that we did it's actually flogged out all of the mounting bolt points um, where they go into the chassis and they're completely stuffed so I'm gonna have to come up with maybe welding some plates in there so we can remount this back up so this is gonna have to go on the list for next time that leaves us with just chairs left on the everything that broke list. I need to go do some shopping for chairs, but I can't do that up here. So I'm just gonna have to do that on my trip. So I'm gonna cross it out. It's on my trip list to do. One thing left and then we're done. Clean the cab. That's it guys, we have ticked everything off our list. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week when I do my first ever solo adventure. See you Can't guys. wait for that. See you guys.